time for the weighing of the bag. 25. And my bag will be even slightly heavier because this will be the first time I'm bringing my big camera. The report said, cross the stream when you come to the stream. Just gotta go ahead and get in. Fire ring here. Oh, I'm only half a mile from my car. What's going on here? Am I crossing again? Uh, the trail is definitely ascending now and I just looked down to see the water suddenly way down there. It's amazing how fast you go up. This area of trails has a lot of work done by the RMC, not the AMC, which is Appalachian Mountain Club, but this one is a Randolph Mountain Club. The Randolph Mountain Club was created sort of around 1900s or thereafter. Uh, because almost 80% of New Hampshire was logged, including big sections of the White Mountains. And some trails in here were lost. So the Randolph Club formed because local people wanted those trails back. And ever since then, uh, anybody can sign up to be a member. I think it was $30. And that gets you a discount at their places of residence. <laughs> I'm going to a tent site today, but they also have two cabins where I've never been but would like to visit soon. But they also do a lot of trail work up here and you can volunteer to do some too. I've been coming up the ravine trail. Feels long, but I'm just probably going kind of slow. And I'm going to be on the Israel Ridge Path they're slippery today because the rocks normally I'm always saying these are wonderful rocks you walk right up well they're a little different today because there's a lot of moss and leaves and those things are slippery Oh, I see the other sign matching down there. I do have to cross it. Can't I just have an easy one? I'll step down that. And then I sat down. Twelve o'clock. I wish I could hit the redo button right now. The trail's getting harder, steeper, and most of the rocks have a lot of moss, which makes me double check every step. Here's what we're looking at right now. These rocks look good, but yeah. All these leaves are slippery too. Well, somebody sure cares about this trail because that must have been a lot of work to make that beautiful stairway. 
I like ladders, but I don't like them covered in slime. Not having fun. This trail has exceeded my interest level. I'm just really looking forward to the next change. Anything, a sign. I see the perch. It's like a mirage in the cloud. So you have the eating area, you have the shelter, the privy, and around the corner was the four tent platforms. This is their bear bin. I didn't know they had a bear bin. It's two pounds that I could have not carried up the mountain. Okay, I've just been sitting here having my coffee and my snacky lunch, but I'm really cold. My feet are cold and wet and uh, my clothes got sweaty and they're cold and wet. My legs have goosebumps. So I need to make a plan right now. Am I going to the summit or am I making a camp and changing clothes and just staying warm and dry for the rest of today? It's only, um, it's about two o'clock. I'm looking at the Mount Washington Observatory weather report. It says drier air will eventually work its way in and a clearing pattern is expected to develop on or above the summits for the afternoon and overnight hours, giving us mostly sunny skies by Thursday. And it's Wednesday. <laughs> this isn't the kind of campsite with a live-in caretaker. The caretaker probably is uh, over at the hut they have not too far from here, although far enough that I don't want to go to it right now. And the caretaker just stops by to say hi and collect money, usually in the evening when it would be full of people. There's three here, and I think there's one way up there. So I've chosen the same platform I used last time. I have a really great sense of smell and I am smelling chai tea. That is not possible. Like there's nobody here. So I'm basically looking at every piece of gear I come to. I'm like smelling it. Like, could it be this? And I'll let you know if I figure it out. I'd like to keep out that mat to sit on it this afternoon, but I think it's more important to put it in here as the barrier to the floor, which is undoubtedly going to become wet. Oh, yep. It's already started. And here is the lovely view. It is three o'clock and I have changed into warm, dry clothes. In any case, I am very relieved to just have a plan, plan B, which is to stay here all day and all night. And just wait for this cloud to dissipate. Just a short walk to go get the water. How are you turning my little jet in and down? No, it's all good. Well, I have met two friends at the campsite. Here we have Eric and Sophie. We are out from Oregon uh, and we are in our first day of presidential traverse. We just did Matt and Adams this morning, sleeping here at the perch, and then seeing how far we go tomorrow. Well, let's see your meal. I'm really need to add peanut butter into it. The clouds have lifted. We Ooh. have a view. It's all gonna get better and better.
<laughs> and I am eating the same meal as always because I love it. Mm. I really am catching the top of the outhouse in this picture. I love this whole scene that everyone is. You all arrived at the perfect moment. <laughs> this was all planned. It was all Nice to meet you too. Have an awesome day up there. See you on YouTube. Yeah, totally. Good luck. They are doing the presidential traverse. The good part should be happening today. And there's my first big view. A little higher now. This is the caution sign because we're going to the Alpine Zone. Oh, I see them way over there. If you step on a football sized rock and the whole thing rolls. Way over there. Okay. All right. I can also now see the other side of this mountain. And actually, I'm pretty happy with the trail. The rocks are much drier than I experienced yesterday. So I'm getting my grip back and the trail is easy to follow. I look up and see a cairn and I look for like this lower worn section. Last time I was across the street, meaning that ridge of mountains on the other side. It's all grayed out from the sun, uh, but I'm on this side now looking down at the auto road. I wonder if there's one more bump up after this. Feeling pretty good all of a sudden. Went up 
there to the very tippy top and it was super windy and then I came right down here and it wasn't so windy and what a view in every direction looking over to Adams one way and then just looking back over to Washington and the auto road just amazing so happy I made it to this one It was 1.65 miles from the perch and it took me two hours and 18 minutes to get up here. And it really wasn't that bad. Remember yesterday how I was so miserable on that dank, slippery valley trail, the river crossings, and the dangerous moss and the rocks this sure feels good today. Mentally, I've broken my day up into compartments, sections, of things I have to do. And uh, that was a big one, doing the summit. Uh, so the next section is to return to the perch to get my gear. I left about 15 pounds <laughs> worth of gear there. again at the perch. This is what I expected it to look like yesterday. Sunny and cheerful. Now I put everything back together and have a little snack before heading down. Somehow it seems like I have more stuff. And the epic fail for this trip was bringing this old tripod. I guess that is all part of adding new gear to just bring it and figure out what works and what doesn't. The caretaker never came by, but I did join their club and I am putting in my cash. Goodbye, cash. Oh my God, get in there. Goodbye, perch. Up to the coal or down Randolph. That's what I want. Oh, okay. Well, the Randolph path is good. It keeps looking like it's about to get easier. Oh, did you see that? <gasps> Pine Martin. Get easier. Oh. The trail has this sort of slant, that slant, and a drop off here and there, drop offs. And a lot of wet things, a lot of leaves. <laughs> oh, I broke the camera lens. Hopefully that's just a screensaver. See, all I stepped on was a normal looking rock. I just stepped there, it looks totally normal to me. And it's deceptive because I'm used to loving the rocks. I'll get back to you in a little bit. It is 1.20. I've been coming down from there. The trail continues to be waterlogged. Lowe's Path. Also in a state of early fall. Totally waterlogged. Tons of slippery leaves and wet rocks. Over there is the IMC log cabin. And I'm not even going to go up to it because I just don't want to walk on that wet rock because I already have to somehow get down that wet rock and I'm really getting tired of wet rocks. <laughs> 
This is one of those suck it up kind of moments. I hear the traffic at least. Never thought I'd be happy to hear those loud truck brakes. I wonder if these leaves are the chai tea I keep smelling so strongly. I'm still going, but the ascent and descent conditions really pushed me beyond my comfort zone. Look at that. I'm trying to get to a high school open house by 6 p.m. And it might be a little late, but I am trying so hard. <laughs> and I am just cooked. I believe there might be one mile of this to my car. And this way was longer, but no significant water crossings and no slime covered ladders. And I still took a fall. <laughs> But hopefully I made the right decision and the safer decision. I see my car. Ah. <laughs>